Hello everyone. My name is Utkar Shrajapati from 4th year Department of Mechanical Engineering IIT Delhi. And as a part of the Automotive Systems course, I'll be presenting on the topic of interior design of an ambulance. So first we start off with the traditional interior layout of an ambulance. We see the here three seating arrangement, the bench seat, the captain seat, the CPR seat. And here is the patient cot. Patient cot is where the area is, where the, is the area where the patient would be loaded. And uh, captain seat and CPR seat are a single seat and the bench seat here can hold up to multiple people. The CPR seat is placed such that uh, it is closer to the patient's chest so that the person sitting on the CPR seat can perform the aforementioned CPR. Also then there are these cabinets, cabinets one, two and three. These cabinets can be used for placing the medical equipment obviously and according to their placement and their sizes uh, they can be decided in what kind of medical equipment goes. So suppose this cabinet looks bigger and has more bread. So we'll probably keep something with more bread or bulkier medical equipment in it. For example, a nebulizer. Okay, so there are two entrance and exit and another one is this rear double door. Uh, the double door is generally used for the patient loading and unloading and the side door here is used the convenient exit and entrance of the cap of the person sitting in the captain seat. We also have the work areas in control, which we'll get into more later. So this layout is actually a type one, type three layout of of the United States standards of uh, ambulance. Um, the Indian standard of ambulance use is pretty similar to this. The Indian standards in which we can support, ad, uh, uh, we can give advanced life support to the patient is pretty similar to this one. Here we go into here, this is a real life picture of the ambulance back, the same ambulances back the ones of the one of which we saw the layout of so the seating arrangement the captain's chair the cpr seat the squad bench here the restraint in which the restraints that the people sitting here need to put put them on the side door here and here's the patient loading area now something's missing in this uh, photo is that this is only the area given but the equipment that is used for patient loading is not given here and which can be seen here this is a striker load loading ramp so what this does is this provides easy loading of the patient so that the ems the emergency medical services personnel don't have to strain themselves too much so this is an adjustment lever to adjust the height of the stretcher so that uh, the patients the patient is easily accessible to the people providing them providing them medical help right so there are a couple of drawings for the layout of for this layout of the ambulance these drawings are given here only for uh, for the viewer to get some sort of idea of the proportions so for example you can see the total breadth of this ambulance is about 90 and uh, 0.15 inches and here it's 47 and 7 8 inch of that is in the patient loading area this but the patient loading area accommodate uh, accounts for almost half more than half of uh, the total breadth similarly you can see other things too about the compartments lengths and breadth another view of the same drawing is this it shows a little more detailed uh, labels and dimensions designing a perfect ambulance so the points mentioned here were actually taken from a EMS professional survey. They said that these things are very necessary and some of these are still lacking and they can be fixed. So let's go through them one by one. Securing the patient, caregivers, other occupants with proper restraints. Another one being lots of space. And by that they mean that multiple caregivers can work at the same time if there is a lot of space. And also there should be mounting monitors on each side so that multiple people can work. So this is something that we'll talk about later, mounting monitors on each side. Third point is caregivers should be able to reach necessary equipment and supplies from the seated and restrained positions. Fair enough. Replace single bench seat with bucket seats. What are bucket seats? These bucket seats are, um, if you've ever seen what an infant seat is, the infant seat has uh, protection on either side so that if there is sudden braking or sudden acceleration, they don't fall from the side of the seat um, to the left or the right. Placing, replace single pen seat with bucket seats, having swivel or movement capabilities. That means the seat itself can move or rotate. 
rotational bucket design high back with a good restraint system another point being having automatic power locks for the exterior compartment and the last point being creature comfort creature comfort means whatever the people sitting inside the ambulances uh, uh, apart from the patients the ems ems personnel for their comfort And these demands are actually very relevant since these people are in there for as long as 12 hours, 12 hours a day. And looking at the current, looking at the current situation we have of a pandemic, they are inside inside an ambulance for for even longer and without any breaks. So they have to stay inside such an ambulance for a very long, long time. So creative comfort is another necessary addition if we want to design a perfect ambulance. And now this was a study uh, called simulation based design concept evaluation for ambulance patient compartments this was conducted by Theogrius Kabila, Y. Tina Lee, Jennifer Marshall, Alison Bernard Feeney from the National Institute of Standards and Technology USA so they tried to list down what were the complications with the current design was um, so they, they broke it down into four points one was the seating restraint so they pointed out the fact that since the seating is this way, the seating of these these two seating arrangements are sideways, and this sideways arrangement actually cause if uh, if in case of a crash, these sideways arrangement can have put the people in a greater risk of severe neck injuries. Also, the bench seats are fitted with lap belts as per regulations, but these lap belts are so uncomfortable that 80% of respondents. Uh, said that in the recent survey said that they do not even wear them during taking care of the patients. Second, we come to the ergonomics. Ergonomics means uh, designing a certain thing with safety and comfort both in mind. So uh, according to, uh, so for ergonomics, they say that inside the ambulance there are confined spaces, physically demanding activities like conducting CPR, loading and loading, inadequate leg room, forcing EMS people to adopt uncomfortable work posture for long duration can cause long-term musculoskeletal damage. Then we come to the workspace storage and equipment. Equipment that is not adequately secured can become projectiles and injure EMS providers or patients. Although standards exist for designing an office work environment, no similar standards are available for designing the patient compartment. Communication. Communication systems enable exchange of information among all occupants of the ambulance and between the ambulance and the rescue scene, dispatcher, or hospital. Radio use is the most common means of external communication. Communication between the compartment and the driver is mainly verbal, which is sometimes ineffective because of the engine noise that finds its way into the compartment. Also, communication can also distract the EMS provider from performing patient care. Right. So, what they did was they broke down the interior design into several categories and they uh, identified for each category what its perfect requirement was. So, like in this category of seating and restraints, they say that the EMS provider is able to reach the patient's body from head to knee, EMS provider is able to face an impact with the patient, things like this, like uh, communication systems when in use allow EMS provider to continue providing safe and effective patient care. So, they broke it down and they did the study and they came up with a design concept of their own. So, First of all, they, they tried to address every issue that we have seen here in the in these four points, cheating, restraints, ergonomics, workspace communication. The following modifications in seating restraints, what they did was they replaced the bench seat with bucket seats. They replaced the simple be lab belts with three or four point restraints. In ergonomics, to reduce uh, the need to stretch when reaching common and critical supplies or equipment, these items are located within easy reach of a seated restrained EMS provider. Seats are designed to rotate to improve access. So here's the design concept and things will get more clear. These, All of these are rotating seats for easy access to any cabinet or any medical equipment. We can also see, so that's where the ergonomics has been taken care of. Then we come to the workspace and equipment. The traditional design allows the bench seat to be used as a work surface, although this arrangement Put equipment within easy reach. It also increases the amount of potential projectiles in case of a crash. Removing the bench seat and the creation of a workstation provides workspace where the equipment can be trapped or stored in cabinet or drawer. A lot of equipment is stored. Stored is uh, very well secured. No equipment can come out and can 
become a projectile or which can hurt the EMS people or the patient itself. Also, if you recall, we talked about having a, a monitor on each side. So these monitors can be monitoring the, say, ECG of the patient. And if we have a monitor on each side, it is way better than having a monitor on one side because then having three people sitting at different angles in different places try to uh, look at the same monitor and try to do different tasks is very difficult for them. So in this study, they even further did uh, a simulation test of their uh, design concept and also what they did is that they showed the design concept to a lot of EMS personnel and they told and they took a survey of uh, if they would prefer this design over the traditional design. The results of the surveys were generally positive and the simulation test was also result, also returned some pro, uh, positive results. Here is a model of an ambulance which was created in 2020 and it actually adopts the multiple rotating sheets configuration that was talked about here. Several ideas for improvement that um, that are also being implemented. So there there are things like safety nets here. So in case of a in case of a crash of the ambulance, the people sitting on the squad bench can have uh, some sort of a safety net uh, if if they fall forward. And there is another thing called a driver intention light, in which if the driver is turning to the left or to the right, these uh, lights light up according to whatever the turn is. So that and also if the driver is about to stop, so these driver intention lights help um, the EMS personnel to preempt whatever uh, in which way the ambulance is going and therefore they can uh, modify whatever they're doing according to that and then there's a light-up cabinet these light-up cabinets have certain benefits to them so first of all the lights are actually in the interior boundary of these cabinets so that there is no glare of light coming out of it also these provide a very efficient lighting inside the cabinet so if suppose there's a small vial kept inside the cabinet and it has some text written on it, suppose it's, uh, it's a hydro, hydro uh, chloroxyquinone and vial. So I can see it from outside that whatever is written on the small vial of what medicine it is without opening the cabinet and taking it out and then seeing it. Um, these are the references that were used for the presentation and thank you.